Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House taking a look at some of the firearms coming up for sale in their October of 2016 firearms auction. And today we're going to take a look at a craft-made North Vietnamese pistol. Now, most of the standard arms used by the North Vietnamese in the Vietnam War were some really, actually really good condition, well-made Chinese uh, military aid. So AKs, SKSs, Tokarev pistols, good stuff. However, at the opposite end of that spectrum, there were indigenous craft-made firearms. These are situations where guys really apparently couldn't get their hands on anything factory produced in China or elsewhere, and they needed firearms, and so they resorted to what they had. And this one is really interesting because it shows a, both manufacturing and engineering techniques, or lack thereof, that are stereotypical of this sort of pistol, and it's a neat one to look at. So let's just dive straight in and uh, take a closer look at this and pull it apart. All right, so I've got this Vietnamese pistol here side by side with a proper, very nice American 1911. And if you squint, they look pretty much the same. So I've adjusted the camera out of focus to give you that perspective. And from here, yep, cool, you have made a 1911. Now, when we actually look at it up close, we'll start to see some issues. So, obvious things we can start with. We know this is a copy of the 1911. All the distinctive features, the grips, these cutouts, slide stop, magazine, safety, hammer. This is clearly someone gave, the, whoever made this, we'll call him the craftsman. Someone gave the craftsman a 1911, gave them this, and said, make me more of these. And the guy said, okay, I don't really know how that works, but I see what the pieces are and I can take it apart and we'll, uh, we'll do our best here. So, hammer, for example, still works, does exactly what it's supposed to, but the profile's a bit different than a 1911. Safety, total failure. We have a uh, yeah, complete failure on the safety because it is it pivots on a pin here and is held in place by a screw and it does not move and it does nothing whatsoever. Uh, but it does look like a safety. It's got that little thumb stop. Maybe the guy thought that was like a thumb rest for your, for your hand. Uh, the magazine catch unfortunately is missing from this pistol. We'll mention that right now. And it looks like it was made the same way as a standard 1911. Someone has added this little aluminum plate that simply holds the magazine in place. So that's, that's why that's on there. That said, someone added that after the gun came back to the US. Now the slide stop looks correct, but uh, it doesn't uh, offer you any way to hold the pistol open. There is no slide lock on this pistol. That is simply a pin that holds the barrel in place. So this is a single function piece on this gun on a 1911. It's a multi-function piece that also acts as a slide stop. Uh, yeah, the serial number on this is 230,777. I am extremely dubious that they ever made 200,000 of these. I suspect that this is someone who looked at a 1911 and said, ah, there are six numbers stamped on the side of it. I'm not sure what those numbers mean, but I guess they're important, so we'll stamp six numbers on the side of this one. And that's what you get there. Unlike some craft-made pistols, this one does actually have functional sights, uh, and the rear sight is pretty much just as small and useless as on an original 1911. And if we look at the back of the slide, we can see it's not very precisely manufactured, but we do have the extractor plunger, and we have a firing pin, and the firing pin even works. If we look at the muzzle, we can see it's sort of halfway there. It doesn't have a bushing, but it does have this textured uh, recoil spring plug, although the reason that this was textured was so that you can push it in, rotate the bushing out of the way, and remove it. And you can't do any of this on this pistol because the front of the slide is all one piece. Now if you look closely, you can see that there's a seam there. This gun is brazed together. It's not welded. As far as I can tell, I don't think it's welded anywhere. So this is manufactured with crude tools, mill, lathe, files, I suspect and then the pieces are actually brazed together. So if we look down here, all this yellow color you see is brazing. Wherever two pieces are fitted together, that's what you'll see. You can see it here in the front strap. The back strap has a bunch of it. They made that out of a whole bunch of different pieces. There is no grip safety, by the way. They did put in a beaver tail, but uh, no functional grip safety. In fact, no 
functional safety of any kind, really. One of the worrisome features, were you actually considering shooting this, is that when you pull the slide back, the barrel doesn't move. On the 1911, the barrel is locked into the slide uh, through this short recoil tilting barrel system. This appears to be straight blowback. So we'll take it apart and take a closer look and find out if that's actually how it's put together. Uh, because it is a 45 caliber pistol. So if it's straight blowback, uh, you don't want to shoot it. Let's just put it that way. Now, disassembly is actually like a 1911 because the craftsman presumably had a 1911 as a pattern, at least to some extent. So I pull the slide back to match that disassembly catch. Then I can pull this pin out. Ah, right. I should take the magazine out as well. Loosen that screw a bit so we can rotate this keeper out of the way. The craftsmen did not have to make a magazine because they were able to use a captured or lost or abandoned USGI 1911 magazine. All right, now we've got the pin out, the slide and barrel just slide right off the front. That's nice and easy. Now, in order to remove the recoil spring, uh, it doesn't come out the front. It's got that plug, but it, it can't come out the front. So what I'm going to do instead is pull it off to the side there. There's our recoil spring and guide rod. And then this isn't going to come out the front either, but I do need this, which looks very much like a 1911 uh, spring front end. And then the barrel lifts out the back like a 1911. There we go. You know, you got this much right. How, how bad could it be? Well, there are no locking lugs. They should be up on the top surface back here. And there's nothing. There's not a swinging link. There's just a pinhole to hold the barrel in place in the frame while the slide cycles back and forth on top of it. In fact, if we look in the barrel, it's just smoothbore. It's not even rifled. From a manufacturing perspective, things get even more interesting here. If you look, you can see a little bit of a, of a half moon seam right there. The breech block, this, this guy, was made as an independent part. And then the slide here was folded over. And you can see they brazed it together here. It's folded over and then the breech block put into it as a separate piece. Now the firing pin does actually work. That's just enough on this gun works that I think if you were to actually try loading and firing it, it would go so far as to detonate a cartridge. And then who knows what would happen at that point, but I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be good. We have the same type of ad hoc manufacture on the frame, where you can see the trigger group is built on a pair of plates here that are mounted inside the main frame plates. Again, we have more evidence of brazing, lots of multiple parts put together up here. This block is also a separate block made and then dropped into the frame and brazed in place. So this is a combination of, of good and bad. You know, on the one hand, Dear Lord, you don't want to pull the trigger on this thing because who knows what's going to happen when you do. On the other hand, the people who built this gun did so with a minimum of, of tooling and knowledge and understanding, and yet they were able to put together a remarkably good product. As bad as it is, the vast majority of people couldn't do anything nearly this effective. Certainly not in the circumstances in which this gun would have actually been made in the jungle uh, or in a small shop in North Vietnam. Now I took the left grip off because I was curious about this and I saw something underneath it. And this is another really interesting element here. And it's a perfect example of someone who copies something but doesn't understand what it does. So this is a system which is supposed to be a safety mechanism. You'll see this on a lot of Spanish guns. What happens here is this piece rotates up and down, and that rounded top section fits in a recess in the slide right there. Now the idea is that if this piece is not pushed up, the gun won't fire. And if the, batter, the slide isn't all the way in battery, there isn't a cutout, so the base of the slide will push this down, thus rendering it impossible to fire out of battery and safe. Now on this gun, if we put the slide on, we can see that this does work. So this piece 
goes up into that little uh, recess, and then if the slides back a little bit, the bar comes down. The problem is, whoever built this, they, they figured that out, but they didn't understand what was supposed to happen in the trigger mechanism. Because on this gun, the trigger will run just fine no matter where this piece is. So I can push it all the way up, the gun will fire, I can push it all the way down, and the gun will fire. Um, I guess I can push it down far enough to have an effect. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to do, is push the trigger bar out of alignment with the sear back here. However, the execution on this pistol is such that this, nothing will ever push it this far down. So it does nothing. What's also interesting about this is you don't actually have this system on the 1911. If we look at the bottom of a 1911 slide, we have a cutout here, but that's for the manual safety. There is no safety cutout like this. The reason is, 1911 didn't use this, but all of the Spanish A-bar pistols did. This was a very typical system on blowback 32s. Uh, so clearly, whoever was building this gun also had access or experience or some sort of understanding of Spanish pistol design. Um, or maybe, I mean, it could be other than Spanish, but Spanish is where you would see this the most. But despite knowing what it was there and knowing to add it, they didn't know how to actually make it do what it's supposed to do. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I really like looking at these, it's, you, I guess you'd say counterfeit, um, but copied with the best intentions in mind, I suppose. Um, these firearms I find very interesting. Just looking at how people try to make them when they don't have a factory at hand, but they're trying to make the equivalent of a factory-made pistol. So if you'd like to own this one yourself, uh, I would strongly recommend against firing it, but it's a really cool addition to a 1911 collection or a Vietnam War collection. Well, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to the James Julia auction catalog page on this pistol. You can take a look at their pictures and description. And uh, if you're interested in it, place a bid over the phone or uh, live here at the auction. Thanks for watching.